Chivo or pasto? This is the question. Ciao amici, benvenuti al Facile Come Italiano. Hello everybody, welcome to Easy as Italian. I'm Reza and in this session we are going to talk about foods. Well, I know food is a topic that most of the people like and also it's a very easy topic so it's a great opportunity for you to put your time on exercising and training on the previous topics of the previous sessions especially the topic of the verbs because as I said there are irregular and regular verbs that can have different conjugations and if you don't practice them these conjugations can someday catch you in the moment so let's start our today's lesson first word for sure would be chibo that means food then what does pasto mean pasto means meal you know breakfast lunch dinner all of these are pasto and so chibo is something that you eat in those pasto and i have to also say that these two words are both uh, singular masculine so if you want to put the article for them you should say il pran il pasto il chibo as easy as that now an essential word water aqua water aqua it's a very easy word just let me tell you well for sure you know that it's a singular feminine just i have to remind you that this word starts with a vowel so if you want to put the article you should put the article what l apostrophe so it would be l'acqua l'acqua the water now another word that has water inside but it's not water that is suco that means juice suco means juice masculine singular il suco now what if i want to say apple juice or orange juice well firstly you should learn the names of those fruits so here are some examples mela means apple arancia means orange banana means banana and anguria means watermelon that is my favorite uh, name of the foods so mela arancia banana anguria now so if i want to say apple juice for sure i should connect the words suco and one of the fruits names for this situation and occasion we would use mela suco and mela and how i would connect them so for sure, we would connect them with a preposition. But which one? I said that when you want to make a preposition, make a connection between words and use preposition to show ownership, like our example that session, uh, Pietro's book, Il libro di Pietro, the book of Pietro, right? So we use D. And here we also want to use D because if we are going to show ownership, how? Like this. Succo di mela. Juice of apple. Juice of apple. Well, the juice is coming from apple. So literally the apple owns the juice. So it shows ownership. That's why we use D. Succo di mela. Succo di arancia. Orange juice. Very easy. Now, I taught you a verb, bere, that means to drink. The conjugation of that, well, as I said, it was a, an irregular verb. So the conjugation was like this. Bevo, bevi, beve, beviamo, bevete, bevono. And as I said, this is kind of one of the most, one of the easiest irregular verbs because of the way of its con its conjugation. Yeah, something like that. So, bevo, bevi, beve, beviamo, bevete, bevono. Now, with this verb and those words, we can make very useful but also simple sentences like, io bevo il succo di mela. I drink the apple juice. Io bevo, I drink il succo di mela. Di apple juice to bevi l'acqua you drink water to you bevi drink l'acqua 
the water okay that's very simple actually so let's move forward after that we're, we learn some things that we drink now let's learn some things that we eat well in the first some examples as always pollo means chicken carne means meat for vegetarians and vegans verdura means vegetables maybe you would say to yourself uh, well verdura is a feminine singular than by vegetables because verdura is has this ability to be used in these situations too for example if there's just one vegetable you would say verdura and if there would be a big sack of vegetables that would be also verdura so very easy now another thing would be pasta the land of Italy is made of pasta if you don't believe me go there so pasta pasta for sure now I taught you also another verb what was it mangiare to eat mangiare means to eat and I said it was a regular verb so it's easy to conjugate but I would tell you again because I'm a very good teacher mangio mangi mangia mangiamo mangiate mangiano to eat very easy regular now let me tell you also another verb a new verb cucinare that means to cook to cook means cucinare the conjugation would be very easy because this verb is regular so it would exactly follow all the patterns of the verbs that have the ending are like mangiare so cucinare has the conjugation of cucino cucini cucina cuciniamo cucinate cucinano and let me tell you that um, this conjugation that I'm saying is just for the present tense. Don't get me wrong. We are not going to go for other tenses at least for this while. So this was for the present tense. Cucino, cucini, cucina, cuciniamo, cucinate, cucinano. Now let's use these two verbs and also these words that we learned to say some useful, ex useful sentences. And, well, for sure, it's simple as always. Io mangio la mela. I eat the apple. Io, I, mangio, eat la mela. The apple. Voi mangiate il pollo. You all, you all, eat the chicken. Voi, you all. Mangiate, eat, il pollo, the, the chicken, okay? Or, lei mangia la verdura, she eats the vegetables, lei, she, mangia, eats la verdura, the vegetables. Now let me tell you some tips. You know, well, these words... Pollo for sure is a masculine singular, so it would be il pollo. Then for pasta, surely feminine singular, so la pasta. Verdura, I have already said, la verdura, feminine singular. Carne is a special word. You remember that I taught you notte, that means night, right? Notte, that means right, and I said... Despite the fact that it has A in the end, it's a singular feminine, so you should put la before it, la notte, the night. And carne is just like notte. It ends with E, yes, but it's a feminine singular, so it's la carne, okay? The meat. This was the thing. Now, we said these things, ah, three more tips. Yeah, no, two tips and three words. So, first one of the tips is that, well, sometimes you cook things and sometimes you make things. Like, for example, you don't cook salad or you don't cook a cake. You make salad. Or in English, you bake a cake, but actually in Italian they say make a cake. Okay? It's also used in English too, yeah. But, well, bake is more common and more correct. 
And things like this, or a dessert, for example, you don't cook that, you make it. So, in Italian, if you want to say those things, you shouldn't use the verb cucinare, no. Cucinare was for cooking. For making, as I have told you, the verb is fare. Fare means to do or to make, okay? So, if I want to say, I make a cake... I make the cake. I should say, Io faccio la torta. Io, I faccio, make la torta, the cake. You may say, why faccio? Well, because it's an irregular verb, guys. I've talked about it. See, fare. Irregular verbs. So, it would be, faccio, fai, fa. Facciamo fate fanno. And for those who say, well, irregular verbs don't have pattern, they have, look here, faccio facciamo, both the same for the first pronouns, the plural and the singular. Faccio facciamo. And then fai fa fate fanno. Almost completely similar to the main pattern of the verbs that end with are. So don't say it doesn't have a pattern. So, io faccio la torta. I make the cake. Lei fa la torta. She makes the cake. Lei, she, fa, makes la torta. The cake. Okay? Very simple. The first step done. Three words now. Colazione, pranzo, cena. Colazione, pranzo, cena. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. And colazione ends with e. So it's a special verb. A special word, for sure. Uh, as you have guessed, yes, this is feminine singular. So it would be la colazione, the breakfast. Pranzo is obvious, singular, masculine, il pranzo, the lunch. And cena, again obvious, the feminine singular, la cena, the dinner. Very easy. Now the last tip. Remember I told you the fruits. Mela, banana, arancia, anguria, right? If you look carefully, you see that all of them are feminine singular. And actually, as much as I know, I'm not saying this um, kind of as an exact thing, but as much as I know and I have seen, all the fruits are feminine singular. And if you want to make them plural, you just take the A and turn it into E or E. Mela would be mele, banana, banane, anguria, angurie, arancia, arance. Very easy. But now, what if I say melo? Well, it's masculine, so it shouldn't be the fruit itself. So what should it be? What do you guess? Melo would be the apple tree. Okay? It's really cool, actually, in my opinion. You just make your, uh, well, way, very much simpler by just saying melo. For example, mela, apple. Mele, apples, melo, apple tree. I have never seen something cool and easy like this. At least not till now. So the session is over. I hope it was, it would have been uh, very useful for you. And so, I hope you'd all be okay. See you in the next couple of days, guys.